It's time now to talk youth football with the guy who sealed the deal in the final win of the year. Trevor Riley joins us. Do you believe in fate? Is it kind of odd? You have this great career, all these awards, all this acclaim, and you're a leader, and you make the last play at the end of the last game. Well, I guess I, I could say I believe in it a little bit, but I'm just more happy we won the game, and I, if I was the guy to do it, it just happened to be by chance. So when did you decide to fire the ball into the south end zone stands? Well, I knew once I picked off the ball, my first impression was go down. So if, if, we had, if I had scored or been maybe tackled and they fumbled the ball, they could get the ball back. So first person was to go down, then I realized they don't have any timeouts left. There's a minute 30 left, the game's over. And I was just filled with emotion. I just chucked it. <laughs> now, I've seen competitions in the practice where guys try to throw it yeah. out of the stadium. But I, not from, you were pretty far out, though. Yeah, I was on like the 15-yard yeah. line. I mean, I had to, maybe if I had Jim Plunkett's arm, I would have been <laughs> able to do that. But I have thrown it out of the stadium from the goal line earlier this season. So oh, you did? Yeah. Nice. That's a big deal when that happens. Yeah, I, I mean, we got into a little wager with uh, the offense versus defense. They had a quarterback throw it out, and then I said, let's go double or nothing, I'll throw it out. So I threw it out, and... Uh, that's how we did that. Double or nothing on? The running. The running after <laughs> practice. So. so you got out of conditioning. Yeah. That explains that noise. We didn't know who threw it because the media is standing on the other yeah. sideline. But, uh, yeah, I was there that day. That was awesome. I saw it. All right, so uh, what do you think of the whole season? Now that it's all said and done, obviously you didn't plan on 5-7. and seven. You also didn't plan on breaking in another new quarterback. Yeah. Um, it's been a very difficult season. started with uh, Gaius in the off season. Um, that's just a huge obstacle for any team to overcome. Then you uh, put that together with Kenneth Scott going down first game of the season, first quarter. Jake Murphy goes down, Wesley Tonga goes down, Travis goes down. and We always talk about offense. If you have a, lo uh, a weak link on offense, um, you can be exposed very easily. Defense is not as much. You can cover them up. So when you have a lot of offensive injuries, it really can hinder your performance as a team and I think we were able to overcome those injuries in a lot of ways. We beat the number, I think they'll probably end up being three or four in the, con in the country this year in Stanford. Um, I'm just sad that we couldn't pull out a bowl game and win the South for the fans and the alumni. Uh, you're a pretty savvy guy so you've heard the rumblings, you've heard huge fans. First off you saw the empty seats yesterday and, and you've heard people complaining about Kyle and that. I know you've given a spirited defense of the coaching staff before. What do you see that makes you think these are the right guys? Um, all you have to do is look at the recent history. We almost won the Pac-12 South two years ago. We were one field goal away from being Pac-12 South champions 750 days ago. So you have to kind of look at the big picture. You can't just make rash decisions in, that, in life and, and in making those kind of decisions, I think. Um, Coach Wienham has won the BCS Bowl game. We were in it in our first year in the conference with the Pac-12 South. And we, to be frank, we've, had, we've been unlucky. We haven't had the ball bounce our way. Last year we led the nation and caused fumbles, and we're near the bottom and fumbles recovered. Uh, this year we had a lot of injuries and we had a lot of plays that were just, we were so close we weren't able to make them. So um, is that coaching? I would say no. I think a lot of it just is fate and just uh, we weren't able to make the plays. I saw a similar question poised to the guys who write the Pac-12 blog for ESPN, and they said that although the Utes have been in the Pac-12 for three years. They've just been playing a Pac-12 schedule. They haven't really been in it. They point out this is the first year with a new facility, yeah. and they're just now getting to the point where they're about to get a full share of the money at an age where I mean, the money is just incredible. When you have a full share, you're way behind. How big a difference is the facility going to make, really, when we look back in three or four years? Well, they've done an incredible job recruiting considering that we were in trailers for a year and a half. Um, compare that to now where we have the many would say one of the best facilities in the western United States. It makes a huge difference. you got kids coming in, families coming in, and when they see that we're, we've been willing to spend money on facilities and training rooms and academics, the parents and the kids, they want to come here. So, this, like they said, this is our first year really having that stuff, and it makes a big difference. People don't realize, they should realize, where are all the best teams right now in the south and the west coast? That's where all the money is. And so we're just starting to get into that mix, and hopefully... Uh, they can do some great recruiting here to come. All right. While that story and that drama plays out, you will move on in a different direction. What do NFL people tell you? What do you hear? What do you think is going to happen with you? Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting situation because I've played three or four different positions here at Utah, defensive end, uh, inside linebacker, outside linebacker. I've even lined up a defensive tackle a few times. Um, so really the biggest thing is we got to find out what teams want me at and what they want me to start training for. If it's defensive end, I need to bulk up. If it's linebacker, you may need to trim down and get some uh, more speed. 
So the biggest thing is, is depending on where I go and if I get drafted, it'll be to a team that wants me in a certain position. So that's kind of where I'm at right now is figuring out where, where they want me to be. College and pro, every defense wants a wild card. So no matter what the team does, there's one guy who can move and you can be on the line. You can yeah. be out and pass coverage, stop the run, go cover somebody. Are you that guy in the NFL or is that guy become so elite that yeah. you're not that guy in the NFL? Well, I mean, I like to think that I, I could do it. Um, do other teams think I can do it? Does the NFL? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, when I pick an agent here in the next few days, we'll be able to figure that out, and I'm sure he'll have a good feel for it. But I think that I have the ability, and a lot of people got to remember, I had knee surgery less than a year ago, major knee reconstructed. I had my ACL redone. I had my meniscus repaired. The same surgery that Derek Rose is having, I had on my meniscus, and I had the same surgery as Adrian Peterson had at the same time. So I think if you give me another six months, um, I'm going to be physically in much better shape. Are there some teams that play a defense that you want to play? Um, I, honestly, I'm all, I'm, I just care about making money. So I got two kids and a wife, and if they want me to hand out water for the league salary, I'll do it. So I, I, to me, it doesn't really matter as long as I can go somewhere and stay on a team and get paid. Stanford or Arizona State is going to win the Pac-12 title game. Stanford, I think. Um, it would be better for us if Stanford wanted to show that how um, good of a win that was and how close we are, but I think Stanford just, uh, I watched the last time they played and they just kind of mowed them over. I think it'll happen again. So close to beating both those teams. Yeah, up two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. That's uh, yeah. it's hard to deal with. All right, well, good luck in the NFL, Trevor. Thanks for coming in. Congratulations on a great college career. Thank you. Trevor Riley joining us here on Talking Sports. Hey, join us in the week ahead on Talking Sports on My Utah TV. The Jazz look to keep on with their winning ways, albeit ESA, for their game with the Rockets tomorrow night. Tuesday, the BYU basketball team hosts North Texas and a battle of undefeateds when the Utes are at Boise State. Comcast Cable 22, Dish, DirecTV Channel 12.